So I said that the, the two holes flying apart are in fact the photon, uh, photon pair. Go to your textbook, here's the description of a photon. It is the particle of light. It comes along in packets. It is in fact a, an oscillating electric field and a magnetic field that are at right angles to each other. And it exhibits a thing called polarization. If you go read your textbooks, the description of polarization is not very satisfying, but hold that thought. Here's what V-theory says about a photon. Well, I'm going to ask you first to consider a spherical ice skater. <laughs> okay, if you, if, you, if you go and Google consider a spherical blah, um, that's an old physics teacher's joke. I won't pain you with it now, but um, in this case, why am I asking you to consider a spherical ice skater? Well, before the ice skater was only spinning on one axis, wasn't he? But we're saying that the elemental volume of the ether has three degrees of freedom, not only in which it can move spatially, but in which it can spin. So here we're saying the elemental volume can spin both uh, around, the z three, three, around the z axis, around the x axis, and around the y axis. A photon, by definition, by V theory's definition, is where the spin around one axis, let's say omega i over here, is, is maxed out. And this one over here caused the, the ether to tear. But it's still spinning in these two other, um, in these two other dimensions, j and k. And the, the mixture of these two result in the frequency of the photon. So this is what V-theory predicts. It also predicts that the hole has its own sort of internal clock. It's spinning at a rate, and it has a radius which is fixed. We said the ether tears at this fixed radius. So you've got a, an invisible internal clock. Let's go. So we talked already about the electric field around the photon. If you had two particles of opposing spin or the same spin, you, you're going to get this um, attraction or repulsion. The hole is tipped slightly, you see there. As it's going around this helical path, we first said that the, these photons are flying apart, but when you've got the two extra um, spin components, it causes the hole to execute a helical path. And it starts encountering its own wake, its own low pressure wake. And so you get an interaction between the electric field and it's, 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 it's now gets an acceleration. And the acceleration of an electric field by Maxwell's equations results in a magnetic field. And, um, and that magnetic field is at 90 degrees by a sort of Coriolis effect is at 90 degrees to um, the electric field. Then the other thing we ask ourselves is, well, is this a particle or is this a wave? Because around that hole is a, a velocity field. Um, it's, it's projecting itself uh, over quite a distance. That sounds wave-like to me. Um, is it a particle? Does it have a, a particular position. If we say the position of it is at the center, the center of what? If you go to the center of the hole, you're going to find nothing. If you go to the center of the helix, you'll also find nothing. And in fact, as the frequency, as the energy of the photon increases, that helix becomes wider. And so there's a certain uncertainty about where it is. I think that uh, V-theory comes up with a more satisfying uh, explanation of polarization. It's in fact to do with uh, the two other components of the uh, spin, and polarization results from the relative values of those two other components and their phase relationship. And so um, one could be in advance of the other, they could have different amplitudes, 
and so you end up with either plane polarization or circular polarization. Current textbooks don't explain that, they, they rather explain it in quantum mechanical terms where you've got a superposition of right and left polarization, but it leaves me, uh, leaves me a bit cold and when I can't ask why, I smell a rat. As the photon is flying through the ether, it is displacing the ether because that volume that has got nothing in it got pushed out. So as the photon is flying, every second the displacement of the ether is this quantity over here, VDE. It's pi e squared times the length. And this, this um, term under the square root is actually the, the length of a, a bit of a helix. If you just wanted to say, okay, well, even a zero energy photon, zero energy photon, what's that? It's one of these. Um, it would be that volume over there is being displaced um, every, every rotation. So what would that cause? That would cause us to observe the very space we inhabit is moving apart. Are photons the actual cause of dark energy? So as a matter of fact, none of it's dark which completely contradicts what Floyd said. Pink, Pink Floyd, that is. He's dozed off already. So, <laughs> he's missed that one. Yeah, so, so, so Pink Floyd said, and a, as a matter of fact, it's all dark. No, I don't think so. I think none of it's dark. Um, n n neither, neither is dark matter um, uh, and, and, or dark energy, but I think V-theory um, shines light on those things that are dark. What is entanglement? Okay, so our mighty vortex ripped through space-time, two holes flying apart um, at the speed of light. The graviton decayed into two photons. Is this entanglement? Because they, st they still seem to be connected. They're connected by a wormhole that we can't detect. This is what I'm saying. This is probably the hardest thing, the most implausible thing, that if two photons were created here in this room and they were to fly apart, V-theory says that there's still a connection between the two that we can't detect because the ether itself is torn and it's imperceptible. My hope is we can do some experiments to actually find out what that wormhole is and maybe detect them somehow. But what we do observe in the labs, that photons are in fact entangled in that way. They are still connected. In fact, the Chinese last year conducted an experiment to demonstrate that photon entanglement can be maintained from a satellite to a ground station and you still maintain the entanglement. So you could be many, many kilometers apart. Could this be the basis of zero latency sort of interplanetary communication? We're gonna need that if we've got a, you know, a space station, if we send spacecraft out, we would need, need to um, reduce the latency of communication. Could it be the basis of teleportation? Well, it could be if if the dimension exposed here in the wormhole is time itself. So how are we doing for time? I meant that rhetorically. <laughs> <laughs> the dimension that is meted out by the vortex, according to V-theory, is time itself. If you were to fly into the mouth of the vortex, you'd actually fall backwards in time to the point where the graviton had created those two holes and then continue falling. You'd now go forward in time and you'd emerge out of the other hole at the same instant that you went in the first hole. Mind blown. Okay. <laughs>